welcome back to episode three of the desk build. As you can tell, the desk is officially a desk. We got the base fully done. We got three coats of finish on it, so it is fully complete. Um, I haven't attached the top yet, and I probably won't do that till way later on. And also the top, I've got it cut to its rough width and length. I've still got a hand plane and stuff like that and uh, do the chamfers again. But at this point, I can actually use it as a desk. And for the next couple episodes, maybe one episode, I can actually do the rest of the work with the desk in here and do all the work out in the shop. So that way I can actually use the desk, which is really nice. But anyway, in this episode, we finished the base and uh, let's, let's jump right into it. Here I'm actually doing the shoulder to shoulder dimension. And just like all the other episodes, the link to the SketchUp file is gonna be in the description. So if you're kind of curious on the shoulder to shoulder dimension and kind of wanna know exactly what I'm doing here, you can just base what I'm doing off of the dimensions from the SketchUp file, because that's all I'm doing here. Um, but the importance of the shoulder to shoulder dimension is it gets everything exactly to size. Even if there's a little discrepancy in the size of the tenons, it doesn't matter. And all I'm doing here is just laying out for the double tenons, just like I always have. And again, I'm just following the SketchUp file. There's nothing crazy going on. That's why designing things in SketchUp is a game changer. I'm also gonna be cutting these tenons on the table saw. And guys, if you have a bandsaw that's worth anything, do it on the bandsaw. It's going to be more accurate. It's going to be easier to do, and it's not going to absolutely destroy your very, very unnecessarily expensive uh, table saw blades that you need for the Kimiko process later on in the project. <clears throat> anyway, I cut the sides off here, and I chisel to the baseline. You know I always do uh, rough joinery on the power tools, and then I kind of... Um, get really accurate with the hand tools. So that's the way I would recommend that you guys do it as well. I'm actually going to lay out for the mortises a little bit different than I usually do. Um, I'm actually going to go off the dimensions here and set the bottom of the mortises and I just transfer that over to the other side. I mark the outside of the tenon from the face and I actually set them up there. And the reason I did this, and this is actually why I recommended doing it on the bandsaw, I just didn't get as accurate as I was hoping with the table saw. It's just a, a difficult thing to do and uh, it just wasn't as accurate as I was wanting it to be, so I just went straight off of the tenons. It worked okay. I had to do a little bit of fitting uh, later on. So, of course, you can use a drill press. Uh, I actually have a little mortising machine that I kind of hate, but um, that's what I used as a mortising machine. I would actually like to get a like a floor standing mortising machine I don't know what to call it um, one that's actually useful this one is just obnoxious to use and I would really only use it for rough cuts As you can tell here, I actually almost go all the way through with the mortising machine, but I don't. And I'll leave the rest for the chisels. That way I make sure I have a very crisp line all the way around. And that is actually a really good tip. I would highly recommend that you guys use the chisels to make your lines really nice and sharp. And here I'm actually laying out for the slope and the mortise. This will allow the wedges to spread open the tenons and make an internal dovetail. Super, super strong joint. And also it looks really nice. Now 
Now that I got the slopes cut, I have to cut the slots for the wedges to go in inside the tenons. So there's going to be two for each tenon for a total of eight wedges. Is that right? Eight? Yeah, that's right. Now I'm making the maple dowels for the leg assemblies, but I, I didn't record much of this process because as some of you should know, I have a video on how to make dowels by hand. Well, kind of by hand. Um, and I will leave that in the top right hand corner right now. So go check that one out. I'm actually really happy with how the maple turned out on this project. When I put the, the finish on, I was hoping that it wouldn't darken the maple too much, and it really didn't at all, and it just, the contrast is exactly what I was looking for. I absolutely love the Mentori Kama. Cutting chamfers with this thing is just an absolute dream. It's fun to use, and you just get these beautiful, shiny, uh, chamfers that you really just can't get with power tools. Just really, really nice. I went through and I hand planed all the surfaces and I would really love to upgrade my hand plane. This one, I mean, it does the job, but I could definitely do better with like a number six or something like that. And I've actually been in the market for a while for one, but all of the plane manufacturers are currently out of stock, which is for obvious reasons, but it's fairly annoying. So maybe one day. I'll get a number six. Now I'm laying out for the holes for the dowels. And I actually wish I would have placed these a little bit farther out, um, but overall, I'm pretty happy with them. As you can tell, I'm not really drilling straight and uh, can't really do much about it with a hand drill. I don't have a drill press. That's one of my next tools on the list. But in the end, the dowels really don't stick out far enough for you to really tell if there's a bad slope anyway. So um, it is what it is. Also, here I'm going to be using one of my new tools. Can you guess what it is? Uh, a flush cut saw. I don't know why it's taken me this long to get one, but uh, I should have had one a long, long time ago. So if you don't have one, highly recommend it.
the tape that you can see there, I've actually cut a couple pieces of leather, and this is a really good uh, little tip. Um, when you use clamps like this, use some leather to uh, kind of uh, soften those clamps because they really do leave some dents if you don't. I also put just a very small amount of glue on this joint. Um, I didn't really need much because that internal dovetail really just kind of pulls everything together anyway. And maybe if I was building this for a client or something like that, I would probably use more glue. But I just didn't feel like cleaning up glue if I'm being totally honest. Um, I know where this is going. I know what I'm using it for. And I really just didn't need that much glue. I mean, I would still be comfortable parking a car on top of this thing. It's super sturdy. Now it is time to cut these things flush. And I just kind of milled up some little blocks here at 10 millimeters because that's how long the tenons are. And I just took apart my uh, little crosscut Dazuki saw and uh, went to town. As you can tell, I'm using gloves because this saw, turns out, is actually pretty sharp uh, on the back side there. And I sliced my pinky pretty good. I use my hand plane to cut a little bit of chamfers there and use some tape to kind of protect the surface. Um, I think these little chamfers turned out really nice when the, the light catches them right in the right way. You kind of shines super super nice so for the finish i just chose a like satin lacquer finish um, i didn't go too crazy with the finish on this i knew where it was going it's just for me so um, i didn't go too too crazy now if this is for a client i might have went with a little more expensive finish but this one actually worked super super nice and it's also pretty durable I built this like little straight cut jig for my circular saw. If I had a track saw, I would just use a track saw obviously, but this is the way I had to do it and it worked pretty good. So, yep. Well, that pretty much sums up episode three. I've got the top just rough cut at the moment. I didn't do any chamfers or anything. It's not even attached to the base. It doesn't actually need to be, um, but I eventually will attach it to the base. But next episode, we're gonna be doing a lot of dovetails. We're gonna be making the case uh, for the computer. We're also gonna be making the case for the drawer, and we're also gonna be making the drawer. So we got a lot to do in episode four. This is episode three. Um, and I really hope you guys will stick around and check that one out. So if you're not subscribed, make sure to do that. And uh, if you like the video, guys, make sure to leave a like. That actually really helps me. Um, so anyway, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you again for watching.